Good morning, and welcome to Nativity BVM Cathedral. For our Chrism Mass, please join us in our opening hymn found in your program. It's going to be Lift High the Cross.
In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. Amen. Well, it's wonderful to have the faith community gathered. Especially to have uh, our priests gathered together as one. Uh, began to rain outside, by the way, while we were processing in, so I blessed the rain. They're all blessed. All the priests are blessed. Welcome, of course, to uh, all of our religious, all of our deacons, all of our sisters, religious sisters, all of our representatives of our Catholic schools, and my staff, and then the people of God. We come together to celebrate this Chrism Mass in the love of Jesus Christ. It is his love that draws us into this cathedral. It is his love that enables us to worship him in this sacred sacrifice. And so gathered together, let us take a moment now to acknowledge our sins and prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, bring us to everlasting life. Anointed your only begotten Son with the Holy Spirit and made him Christ and Lord. Graciously grant that being made sharers in his consecration, we may bear witness to your redemption in the world through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit 
God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring glad tidings to the poor, to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and release to the prisoners, to announce a year of favor from the Lord, and a day of vindication by our God to comfort all who mourn, to place on those who mourn in Zion a diadem instead of ashes, to give them oil of gladness in place of mourning, a glorious mantle instead of a listless spirit. You yourselves shall be named priests of the Lord, ministers of our God you shall be called. I will give them their recompense faithfully, a lasting covenant I will make with them. Their descendants shall be renowned among the nations, and their offspring among the peoples. All who see them shall acknowledge them as a race the Lord has blessed. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the book of Revelation. Jesus Christ is the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead, and ruler of the kings of the earth. To him who loves us and has freed us from our sins by his blood, who has made us into a kingdom, priests for his God and Father. To him be the glory and power forever and ever. Amen. Behold, he is coming amid the clouds, and every eye will see him, even those who pierced him. All the peoples of the earth will lament him. Yes, amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, the one who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. The word of the Lord. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus came to Nazareth, where he had grown up, and went, according to his custom, into the synagogue on the Sabbath day. He stood up to read, and was handed a scroll of the prophet Isaiah. He unrolled the scroll and found the passage where it was written. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to bring glad tidings to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, and to proclaim a year acceptable to the Lord. Rolling up the scroll, he handed it back to the attendant and sat down. And the eyes of all in the synagogue looked intently at him. He said to them, Today, this scripture passage is fulfilled in your hearing. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, Lord Lord Jesus Jesus Christ. Christ.
It is a joy to celebrate the Chrism Mass and to have all of our priests gathered to renew your promises as priests and to have, of course, our people of God gathered together. As we heard in St. Luke's Gospel, Jesus announced himself as the Messiah in his hometown. Now we know they had trouble accepting that, but that's where he chose to announce it. And it was the prophet Isaiah that he quoted. And I'm going to actually use the prophet Isaiah's words from the text to speak to you about what really is happening for us. That Jesus proclaiming himself as the Messiah and the Savior is speaking directly to every single one of us, and especially us in the priesthood. But all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus, all of us, his love is given to us in a very special way. And he comes to us in, in this Eucharist. He gives us himself. I think let's go ahead. I lost Terry again, so we're not going to do that. <laughs> How about? Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Together. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. We'll, move, we'll weave that into the homily as the Spirit moves me, so let's see. Let's see. And so we, we hear Isaiah proclaiming, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. Now, coming from the point of view of the Messiah, that's actually the moment. But it's also speaking to us, each of us. And it's saying to us, all of us have the Spirit of God. And that the Spirit of God has come upon us. And that's actually what we celebrate in this Eucharist. The Spirit of Jesus with us. And we also have been anointed in many of us multiple times, in baptism, in confirmation, in holy orders. The oils are really meant for us to be signs of the power of God and the grace of God coming to us and touching us. He has sent me to bring glad tidings to the lowly, to heal the brokenhearted. My brothers, when we hear that one, that's directly to us. He has sent us to bring glad tidings to the lowly and to heal the brokenhearted. And so with the oil of the sick, we will anoint those who are hurting. We will anoint those who need to hear the words of salvation through Jesus, through this holy anointing. May the Lord in his love and mercy help you, and with the grace of the Holy Spirit, may the Lord who frees you from sin save you and raise you up. Praise to you. Ah, Terry has arrived. King of endless glory. And so we pro proclaim liberty to captives and release to prisoners. Now that can be taken literally, folks that are actually in prison, but it also can be, take, be taken in terms of our ministry, and that is to bring people to Christ, especially in baptism. And that as they approach the sacrament, we anoint them with the oil of catechumens to bring them healing, to bring them peace, to bring them forgiveness, and to prepare them for the Easter water that will touch them and heal them of all their sins. Wow, it's really a gift that he gives us. And so we sing. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. King of glory. And he invites us to announce a year of favor from the Lord, a jubilee year, where all things are forgiven. 
and a day of vindication by our God to comfort all who mourn. And that's part of us as a church. All of us who are baptized in Christ Jesus share in his love. We are sons and daughters of God, and we are heirs of heaven. We are also prophets, priests, kings, and queens, heirs of heaven. Priests in the terms of witness. My brothers here are priests in terms of orders. And they each have been ordained to shepherd the church. And to place all those who mourn in Zion a diadem instead of ashes. And to the kids, a diadem is really a crown, a crown, instead of ashes. That there is a real shift, an invitation to a shift in how people are living and how we are living. And that it really is about the joy of the gospel and letting the joy of the gospel speak through us. And to give them the oil of gladness in place of mourning, a glorious mantle instead of a listless spirit. And the oil of gladness, sacrament of confirmation, holy orders, baptism, celebrated together with that special gift of holy chrism. That oil of gladness is the joy of the Lord. That's who the Lord calls us to be. People who are joyful in the love of Jesus Christ because we know he is with us. And so we sing. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. So in a moment, my brothers, we will each renew our promises to the Lord Jesus Christ and to his church. And we actually have this moment now to reflect on the oil of gladness that has touched our hands, the oil of gladness that has touched my head, and then all the baptized have also been touched on your heads with the oil of gladness, holy chrism. And that anointing is imperishable. That anointing is a call to a missionary joy that the Lord calls us to. Strengthened by the sacrament of holy orders, strengthened by the sacrament of confirmation and baptism, the Lord Jesus calls us into ministry. He calls us to serve. And he calls us to be open to the grace that he wants to fill us up with. And each of us is really a recipient of that grace. All of us. It is the kind of anointing that touches the deepest part of us. It's the anointing of our hearts. It's the anointing of our spirits. It's the anointing of the love of Jesus Christ in our lives. It really enters into us so deeply that it enters our bones. We are anointed in him as priests, as followers of Jesus Christ. And the missionary joy he calls us to is a priestly joy. It's a kind of joy that can never be taken away. Never. No matter what's going on. And I, like you, have had moments when the bishop has done things that have caused me to go, hmm. You can quote me, guys, on that one. <laughs> and moments in which we felt like the church does not really care. In those moments, it is for us to be reminded of the gift of holy orders. For when the Lord anointed our hands and hands were laid on our heads, we were changed. And we were given a great gift, a gift to love the people of God, 
a gift to share the sacraments of the church, a gift to shepherd the people of God. And so let us sing. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, bring of So part of the oil of gladness, part of the joy that we are given by Christ is connected to the people. And the people are connected to us. It is with the people that we really find where we belong. As each of us know, when we celebrate Mass privately, you're almost seeming like speaking to yourself. Of course, we know that the host of angels are there, heaven is there. However, when the people of God are there, and we had a kind of experience of that during COVID, it makes a difference. We realize who we really are together as a church. God loving us into being together and sharing in the blessing of being one in his love, sharing in the blessing of comfort with us together as church, and especially hearing the call of that missionary joy which calls us to evangelize, to not just simply sit with what God has given us, but to share it with the world, and to share it with our families, to share it with our people. My brothers, guard the joy the Lord has given you. Guard it in prayer, guard it in fidelity, and guard it in obedience. And I'm not just saying, listen to your bishop now. I'm saying, listen to the Lord. Listen to the Lord. And to my people of God, as our priests renew their promises, it's a moment for you to be one with them, to support them, and to help them to be able to listen to God in their lives so that they may share what they hear with you and you may share what you hear with them. It is a moment in which we share in the love of Christ. Pray for your priests, pray for me, that we may all together truly celebrate Jesus alive in our midst and the spirit of gladness that's been given to us that we celebrate in this Eucharist as we consecrate these oils to be used in all the sacraments of the church throughout the entire diocese. And together we sing. Front. I presume I had the hat. Yes. Okay. I'd ask all the priests now to stand. Beloved priests, beloved sons, on the anniversary of that day when Christ our Lord conferred his priesthood on his apostles and on us, are you resolved to renew in the presence of your bishop and God's holy people the promises you once made? I am. Are you resolved to be more united with the Lord Jesus and more closely conformed to him, denying yourselves and confirming those promises about sacred duties towards Christ's church, which prompted by the love of him, you willingly and joyfully pledged on the day of your priestly ordination. Amen. Are you resolved to be faithful stewards of the mysteries of God in the Eucharist and the other liturgical rites, and to discharge faithfully the sacred office of teaching 
following Christ the head and shepherd and seeking any gain and move only by the zeal for souls. As for you, dearest sons and daughters, pray for your priests. That they, that the Lord may pour out his gifts abundantly upon them, keep them faithful as ministers of Christ, the high priest, so that they may lead you to him who is the source of salvation. Christ, hear us. Christ, graciously hear us. And pray also for me, that I may be faithful to the apostolic office entrusted to me in my lowliness, and that in your midst I may be made day by day a living and more perfect image of Christ, the priest, the good shepherd, the teacher, and the servant of all. Christ, hear us. Christ, graciously hear us. May the Lord keep us all in his charity and lead all of us, shepherds and flock, to eternal life. Amen. Thank you, Deacon. 
God of all consolation. You chose and sent your son to heal the world. Graciously listen to our prayer of faith. Send the power of your Holy Spirit, the consoler, into this precious oil, this soothing ointment, this rich gift, this fruit of the earth. Bless the oil and sanctify it for our use. Make this oil a remedy for all who are anointed with it. Heal them in body, in soul, and in spirit. Deliver them in every affliction. And we ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Lord God, dear of all who believe in you, bless this oil. Give wisdom and strength to all who are anointed with it. In preparation for their baptism, bring them to a deeper understanding of the gospel. Help them to accept the challenge of Christian living. Lead them to the joy of new birth in the family of your church through Christ our Lord. Let us pray that God, our almighty Father, will bless this oil so that all who are anointed with it may be inwardly transformed and come to share in eternal salvation. God, our maker, source of all growth in holiness, Accept the, the joyful thanks and praise we offer in the name of your church. In the beginning, at your command, the earth produced fruit bearing trees. And from the fruit of the olive tree, you have provided us with whole oil from holy chrism. The prophet David sang of the life and joy that the, the oil would bring us in the sacraments of your love. After the avenging flood, the dove returning to Noah with an olive branch announced your gift of peace. This was a sign of a greater gift to come. And now the waters of baptism washed away the sins of men and by the anointing with oil, olive oil, you make us radiant with your joy. At your command, Aaron was washed with water. At your, and your servant Moses, his brother, anointed him priest. This too foreshadowed greater things to come after your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, asked John the Baptist in the waters of the Jordan, you sent the spirit upon him in the form of a dove and by the witness of your own voice, you declared, to be your, you declared him to be your only well-beloved son. In this, you clearly fulfill the prophecy of David that Christ would be anointed with the oil of gladness beyond the, his fellow men. And so, Father, we ask you to bless this oil you have created, fill it with the power of your Holy Spirit. And through Christ, your Son, it is from him that chrism takes its name. 
and with, Christ, with chrism you have anointed for yourselves priests and kings, prophets and martyrs. May this chrism sign of life and salvation for those who are born to be born again in waters of baptism, wash away the evil they have inherited from the sinful Adam. And when they are anointed with this holy oil, make them temples of your glory, radiant with the goodness of life that has its source in you. And through this sign of Christ, the chrism of salvation for those who will be born again of water and the Holy Spirit. May they come to share eternal life in the glory of your kingdom through Christ. Amen. receive this bread may become the body of Christ. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. God bless you. I receive this wine. May it become the blood of Christ. Thank you. God bless you. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. For to the earth, work of human hands, become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. For to the vine, work of human hands, become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever.
as we enter into this Eucharist, we'll take all of the universal prayers that we have and place them now on the altar. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the power of this sacrifice, O Lord, we pray, mercifully wipe away what is old in us and increase in us grace of salvation and newness of life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let your hearts be lifted up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks Lord Holy Father Almighty and Eternal God for by anointing of the Holy Spirit you made your only begotten Son High Priest and the new and eternal covenant and by your wondrous design were pleased to decree that his one priesthood should continue in the church. For Christ not only adorns with a royal priesthood the people he has made his own, but with a brother's kindness he has also chosen men to become sharers in his sacred mystery. Through the laying on of hands, they are to renew in his name the sacrifice of human redemption, to set before your children the paschal banquet, to lead your holy people in charity, to nourish them with the word and strengthen them with the sacraments as they give up their lives for you and for the salvation of their brothers and sisters. They strive to be conformed to the image of Christ himself and offer you a constant witness of faith and love. And so, Lord, with the angels and saints, we too give you thanks. As an exaltation, we acclaim. Therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition, and through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, 
which we offer you firstly church be pleased to grant her peace to guard unite and govern her throughout the whole world together with your servant Francis our Pope me your unworthy servant and all those who holding to the truth hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, order our days in your peace, and command that we will be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect Make it spiritual, acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most blessed Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the, day be on the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, chalice his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. For, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek 
and the Olim Hasakum Thais Tzvat Lis Leibenim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne to the hands of your holy angel in your altar in high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through the participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your son, may he be filled with every grace and holy blessing. Remember us, Lord, your servants, who have gone before us with a sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace, through Christ our Lord. Amen. To us also, your servants, who those sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord. Through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. And through him and with him and in him, Ill God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom of God and the glory are yours. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you, Deacon. Peace be with you. And peace be with you. And peace be with you, Don. Thanks. Peace to you. Peace to you.
behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body please keep me safe. May the blood of Christ keep me safe for eternal life.
Please join us in our communion hymn found in your breaking bread number 487. Christians, let us love one another, number 487. Let us pray. We beseech you, almighty God, that those you renew by your sacraments may merit to become the pleasing fragrance of Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. So my brother priest, the oils will be uh, in the normal location for you to pick up and take to your parishes. Uh, also, we'll have lunch at the usual place together uh, to, to share our meal together. And to uh, the church, thank you for your prayers today. And also thank you to all that uh, have worked to make this liturgy uh, so very special. It has been very special to me. Uh, I appreciate all my deacons and servers and uh, our seminarians and our choir. Uh, and Terry, I'm glad I found you. This is a good thing. Forgive me, Father, for I have sinned. <laughs> so the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down your heads. May God, who by the resurrection of his only begotten Son, was pleased to confer on you the gift of redemption and adoption and give you gladness by his blessing. Amen. May he by whose redeeming work you have received the gift of everlasting freedom make you heirs to an eternal inheritance. Amen. And may you who have already risen with Christ in baptism through faith, 
by living in a right manner on this earth, be united with him in the homeland of heaven. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain forever. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join us in our Mary tribute found on 697 Salve Regina. Salve Regina. as we process out, if you will, we'll gather outside the church, facing the church, for a photo together. And as we conclude our celebration, please join us in our closing hymn, found in your breaking bread, number 392, Lord, you give the Great Commission, number 392. <laughs> Welcome, welcome.